Hello everybody and welcome back to another My Porch Prints tutorial. This is Kira and today I'm going to be showing you how we put together the cover for the Naturalist journal that I recently did a flip through video of. And for this journal it does come with a freebie which you can see here. Uh, this freebie is available in our Facebook group but you can also purchase it from our Etsy shop if you choose to do that instead. And it comes with two different sizes and the larger of these is actually meant to go along with these uh, shaker circle domes that we got off Amazon. We will have a link for that in the description box below if you're interested. It has like an adhesive back to it and this is what's going to kind of give our magnifying glass that like 3D effect. So make sure that you pick those up if you want to have the same effect as um, the one on my journal. And uh, inside the dome, you could use anything you want. I'm going to be using a fussy cut butterfly inside of mine. You could use like a flower or some other sort of plant, or you could actually fill it with like sparkles or beads to make it into a shaker. Um, that's entirely up to you. I'm just gonna go ahead and use one of these fussy cut butterflies that I have. Um, I printed it out in a larger, and then there's also a smaller size. And I'm just gonna layer them, and that's gonna add to that 3D effect uh, for the cover of this uh, journal. All right, so um, once you have your magnifying glass uh, printed out, I went ahead and printed it on cardstock. Um, you can go ahead and cut out whichever size works best for you. Um, you could use a Cricut to cut this out, or you could use like an X-Acto knife or some scissors or something like that, completely up to you. And then just go ahead and cut around that image. All right, and once you've done that, set that aside and we're gonna start making the base of the journal. So I am using some of this um, chipboard that I have online. Again, this is linked uh, down below on our website. And uh, I believe these are five and a half by eight inches. I will have to double check on that. <laughs> It's five and a half by eight and a half, sorry. <laughs> I use it all the time and I always forget. And I'm gonna be marking off a three inch spine from one of these pieces and I'm just gonna go ahead and cut that out. So I will have a front piece, a cover piece, and then my spine. And then to cover it, since I wasn't really sure what I was gonna do with it right away, I decided to just give it a blank base. So I'm just taking two uh, sheets of regular paper, just white, eight and a half by 11 sheets of paper. And I'm going to overlap them by about an inch. You can kind of see here, I'm marking that off and then I'm just gonna line them up. And then using Fabri-Tac, I'm going to glue those together. And Fabri-Tac is just a non-water-based glue so that the paper doesn't wrinkle. We really like Fabri-Tac, it's super durable and it works really well. So I'm just gonna go ahead and glue those together like this. And then I'm going to lay out my pieces, giving them about an inch border. I don't usually measure this one. I just kind of eyeball it until it looks right. And then I'm going to lay out my pieces, weighing them down with some heavy objects. And then I like to mark the corners so that I can lay things back right where they were before, leaving about a quarter inch of space between these three pieces. And then I'm just going to use some more Fabri-Tac and glue them down like this. And then I'm going to take these corners and I'm going to be folding them in like this as well as all of the edges to sort of pre-crease these here and then glue each of those corners and edges down and that's going to give me a nice clean edge for my journal cover. And then you should be able to just fold them uh, along the creases on either side of the spine like this and now you've got a nice uh, simple base for your journal cover. And I'm gonna be going over the edges of mine with some Distress Ink in the color Vintage Photo because you will be able to see these edges the way I'm going to decorate this today. So I'm just gonna make sure to hide those with some heavy inking. And then taking one of the decorative papers from the Naturalist Journal Kit, I'm going to just kind of cut it down to fit right over the spine here, um, going like a bleeding into both covers just a little bit so it gives a nice sort of seamless edge here along the spine just like that. And next I'm gonna work on covering the inside. Now this is gonna depend on which binding method you use. If you are using a sew-in method with a hidden spine template, you'll want to do this after 
you already glue in your hidden spine so that you can hide the edges of that. We do have a tutorial on the hidden spine template if you're curious, and I will link that down below. But if you are doing the brad binding method, which is what I'm doing today, you can go ahead and follow along here. I just went ahead and picked two matching pieces of paper from the naturalist kit, uh, cut them down to size, and then kind of overlapped them and glued them together like this. And then I'm just gonna glue it to the inside cover, go ahead and fold those creases here along the spine. It might help to have like a bone folder or something to help you make those crease. And then I'm just gonna go over the edge with some Distress Ink to help it blend in just like that. All right, so now we can go ahead and work on our signatures. So for this kit, I went ahead and printed these on just plain paper. Um, these are the papers that come with the Naturalist kit. And then there's also a extra kit of extra pages in case you wanted to bulk up your journal a little bit more and these come with three different sizes so I went ahead and used all of those just printing them out front and back like this and then I'm going to cut off all of the borders here and sort of organize them into signatures so I'm using bulldog clips to help keep things together here and I am using um, about four to six regular pages and then just a couple of those smaller pages uh, sort of scattered about in each signature. And then I'm also grabbing um, a couple of coffee dyed papers. This is entirely optional. Um, these are just some that we bought online, but I like them because they add a little bit of texture. And I have five signatures, although the hidden spine template that we'll be using uh, is a three inch spine and it comes with like six signature uh, template markings. Um, I'll talk a little bit about why I did five later. Um, for the edges of the paper, I decided to pick up this Tim Holtz deckle edge paper cutter. Um, I've never used this before and honestly I kind of didn't love it because this guard here doesn't allow the paper to be cut like lengthwise so you have to fold your papers in half which works for my project but it might be annoying for some other people's projects so just keep that in mind. And I did struggle at first. It was a little bit uh, chompy. I was, uh, you can only do a couple of pages at a time. Um, so it did take quite a while to cut all of these edges. However, I have done my papers uh, like torn edges by hand before, and it was kind of painful on my fingertips um, after so long. So I, I think in the end, I would still recommend this. It still did the job. I got better as I went and um, it did save me a little bit of pain and trial. So. Uh, something else to remember, if you cut your edges uh, and you have um, coffee dyed paper, they will be a little bit bigger because they're not trimmed. So it's going to give you a layered look. If you don't want that, maybe skip the coffee dyed papers here um, or trim off those edges. But I kind of like the way it looks when it's all said and done. So I've gone ahead and organized all of my signatures, made sure all of the images are upright like this and that I have them organized kind of in the order that I want them to be. And uh, now we can go ahead and ink these edges. So um, this process did take a while to ink all of the edges uh, of every page inside and out. So maybe put on like a podcast or something and go ahead and take your time to do that if you so desire. All right, so now that we have all of these signatures and I like the way it looks, we can go ahead and add them to the journal. So I'm going to be doing my brad binding method here. So uh, if you are sewing, remember for your um, hidden spine template, you want the paper to match whatever papers you're using to cover the inside. That's just a little note. If you're doing brad binding, it doesn't really matter. Uh, you could just leave the template blank. And then I'm going to be using five signatures instead of six. Um, I just thought it would fit better for my like personal journal that I wanted to make. So um, I'm going to be marking my own holes. And to do that, I'm just going in between the ones that were already on the template here. And that's going to give me like five nice, even leveled uh, like template circles. And that makes sure that my pages aren't staggered like significantly from one to the next and it just keeps things looking nice and neat. So just going in with a Sharpie here, I'm just going to make all of these holes really fast. Again, this is optional. If you wanted to, you could just make six signatures and save yourself the time and trouble. Um, it's just the way I organized my papers. I came out with five signatures and then I didn't feel like changing it. So <laughs> this is how I'm doing it. All right, so once you've made all of those, I'm gonna go ahead and fold the edges of the template 
and just sort of uh, sandwich it inside of my cover here using some clips to hold it in place. And then we have these book binding kits li uh, whoa. <laughs> linked, <laughs> linked in the description box below. And in those boxes comes this little awl, uh, this tool that you could use to poke the holes out like this. Um, you could also use a hole punch. Uh, we have this one that has a 1 8 punch here. And I'm going to be using that because it just makes the punches through the cover a little bit cleaner. Um, takes a little bit of arm, arm strength, but the chipboard is not too hard to cut through. So I'm going to go ahead and match up my hole punch to those marked holes and just punch all of those out. All right, for the signature itself, I'm going to open it up to the center fold and I am going to clip uh, this little template into each of my signatures like so. And then I'm going to poke out these little holes that are already marked here. And then using uh, brads, I'm going to be securing this um, signature into the journal. So just going through the back spine here like this, pushing it through and I'm going to adjust it so that the prongs are going up and down uh, vertically and not horizontally because otherwise you won't be able to fold your pages closed. I do have an entire tutorial step-by-step uh, -step on how to do this method if you want to see it in a little more detail. Um, so make sure you check that out on our channel if you are interested. All right, and once I've added all of those in, I can kind of fold my papers and recrease them here like this. And now you have your first signature secured into your journal cover, just like this. And uh, the brads do show on the outside, so that's something to keep in mind while decorating, um, just when choosing what kind of binding method you wanna use. All right, and this is what it looks like once all of the signatures are in there. Um, I really do like this method. It allows you to remove signatures if you wanna edit them or like add new pages in. Um, and it's also really strong and sturdy. I actually think this is the strongest method I've ever used and I really like it. All right, so for decorating the cover here, I am taking some more of those decorative papers from the Naturalist kit. And I printed this one out twice and cut, out, uh, cut it in half and I'm using the like floral portion of it for the background and then taking another paper from the kit I cut it just slightly smaller so that there was like a border sort of left around it um, and I'm just going to be layering these so I'm doing some corner cutting here and I'm using a little bit of distress ink to make them pop from one another and I'm just going to glue them together like this adding a couple layers to the cover here and then with my uh, 3D butterfly, I'm gonna go ahead and ink those edges as well since these wings will kind of show a little bit on the back. You could print a decorative paper on the back of this if you wanted to, that's up to you. And then I'm just going to layer these little butterflies together uh, using a little bit of glue right in the center fold like this. Just go ahead and tuck that little butterfly in there like this. Now you've got this cute little 3D flying butterfly sort of effect here. All right, and gluing that down to the cover, uh, first I wanna lay everything out and make sure that I have everything where I want it to be. And once I'm happy with where I'm gonna glue things down, I can go ahead and proceed here. Just add the butterfly and let it dry for a moment. And then with uh, these little shaker uh, domes here, I'm gonna pull off the adhesive backing and I'm gonna very lightly place it where I kind of think it should go, um, making sure that everything matches up properly. You don't want things to be super crooked or, you know, it's up to you how you wanna decorate, but for me, I wanted to just make sure everything was gonna fit kind of how I liked it. And then once I'm sure I like where everything is, I can go ahead and press down on that shaker cup, just like so. And then it does have a plastic film over the cover that I'm going to remove. And that way it's nice and clean. It's not smudged or scratched. And then using some Fabri-Tac, I'm gonna put it on the back of my uh, magnifying glass cutout, but I'm also gonna put it around the rim of the plastic uh, shaker cup like this. And that way everything glues down and stays in place. 
And then I got a little bit off with mine. It was a little too low, so you can kind of see that border there. So make sure that you line things up when you're pressing things down before they dry. But the effect is really pretty when it's done either way. I really love how it has like this 3D shine to it. And you can see the pop-up butterfly inside of there. I think this is so fun. And I was really happy with how this turned out. Um, it was an idea that was kind of just in my head before and now it's a reality and I'm really happy with it. <laughs> So to finish up the cover, I'm gonna add uh, the back panel and just go over it with a little bit of distressing, gluing that down here. And then with the spine, I am decorating it with some of these pressed flowers, um, these real pressed flowers. And I'm laying them out kind of to find the design I like. And once I'm happy with that, I'm gonna be taking Fabri-Tac and just carefully gluing each piece down. Now, uh, to be honest, I would recommend not using real flowers now that everything is said and done. Um, they're very delicate and I kept having petals like falling off while I was working and you just have to be really careful with it. Um, so I would actually recommend using some faux pressed flowers. We have some in our shop that are actually like photocopies of these exact same flowers. So you can have the same look without having any of the hassles. So I would recommend picking these up. I will have them linked down below if you are interested in that. That. All right, and now we can go ahead and finish up with some hardware here. Again, we do have faux hardware uh, in our shop that is based on these same hardware you see here. So you could just print those out and stick them on and be done with it. Um, if you wanna save a little bit of time and money working with the real thing, which can get a little expensive. Um, I'm going ahead and adding a book plate. Again, we do have faux book plates as well. So if you wanna just print everything off, you're welcome to, or you can find links for these items down in the description box. And then I'm just taking uh, like a scrap fussy cut that I had in a random box and I'm just gonna tuck this little label down in here like this. And then I'm gonna go ahead and add some more corners to the back cover as well. So on the actual corners, these just like, this hardware piece just pinches around it. With the other side, I have to actually flatten them with a hammer and then glue them down, so. Again, if you want to save a little time and effort, maybe just use the faux hardware, that's up to you. And to finish it off, I'm grabbing another label from the scrap box that I have, as well as a book plate, and I'm just gonna glue that to the back of my journal at the very top, like this. And this is the finished cover. So now we've got our cover done, our base done, we have all of our signatures in, ready to decorate, which will be the next tutorial. So uh, make sure you subscribe and keep an eye out for that, and I will see you next time. Bye!